If you're squeamish about entrails, this video may not be for you. Today at the House Attacks, we're going to be dissecting this beverage machine. Hi makers, builders, and do-it-yourselfers, Harley here. Today we're going to roll up our sleeves, protect our hands from sharp edges, and actually do some work. My employer had this vending machine back in the back corner of the warehouse, and the boss wanted the warehouse cleared out, so they, they told me if I could take it away, it was mine. So of course I took it. Nobody knows if it really works. It's been there longer than anybody else has been there. And uh, so we don't really know what I'm gonna find when I get into this. Hopefully there's gonna be some motors, maybe some relays, solenoids, other mechanical and electronic uh, bits and bobs that might be able to scavenge further parts. It also has a nice cabinet, pretty thick sheet metal. So we'll take a look at that and, and hopefully be able to use it for something. Uh, I don't have a key for it, so we're gonna have to cut it open. The way this lock works is there's a, this metal bezel and there's this other metal insert part. When you turn the key, this metal insert part pops out and then you can turn the lock. There's a bolt that goes straight back here into the unit and that's what holds the, the door closed. So since I can't, don't have the key, I'm gonna to have to cut the bolt. So this takes six different types of cans. Uh, they go in here, they roll down in a serpentine way down to the bottom where they get distributed. So the walls are double walled construction. There's the outside heavy, thick sheet metal. And then there's, uh, looks like some thinner sheet metal inside galvanized with insulation in the middle. On the door unit, there's also an inside insulated door that allows, uh, keeps the cold inside and also gives a place in here for displaying product in what's in each one of the units. So down here at the bottom, there's a chute. And above the chute, there's six motors with kind of a screw drive mechanism on it that allow it to release one can at a time when the electronics tell it to go. Down at the very bottom of this unit, there's a refrigerator unit that um, looks really gunked up. Hopefully that motor is still good, hopefully the compressor is still good, because those can be used as uh, either vacuum pumps or air pumps. But we won't be able to get to that until we take all the rest of this out. So that's it for the overview of this particular unit. It's designed to work in conjunction with a snack machine that has the, the money changer in it and has all the control electronics with product selection switches and things like that. So this is just the mechanical side of things. Tomorrow we'll get into actually taking everything apart. Very good year. Okay, we're out here the next day since we ran into sunset last night. First thing I want to do is take off this inside door so I have a little bit more room to work with. And there's just a couple screws top and bottom for, to do that. Each product could have its own price and all the available prices are printed on this strip. The strip was positioned as appropriate for the product settings by loosening the screws, adjusting the position of the strip, and tightening the screws back down. Now that I have the motors exposed, we can see a little bit better how this mechanism works for releasing product. The motors turn this plastic part here, and when there's, there's two, pa two paddles that are offset from each other, 180 degrees. So the first one pops up like this and keeps the product from rolling out. When somebody makes an order, it then rotates. So it's like this. There's a paddle behind that's keeping the product from coming out more than one. And then this one is releasing just one. So it just kind of goes like this, letting one product come in and then it dispenses it. And there's a sensor switch here to, so it knows where it is in its circular rotation and there's another switch back in the back that tells when it's out of product. 
Okay, so it looks like this this unit that allows the product to roll down and dispense and holds everything. Uh, looks like that's one unit that just kind of bolts into the refrigerator portion. So there's a couple bolts top and bottom that I think is all it needs to do to release that and let it come forward. These bolts are really corroded and so it's taking different combinations of different wrenches in order to get in there and loosen them up and get them out. But I think once I've done all that, this unit, this whole unit will just kind of slide out. At least that's what I'm hoping. So I've been really impressed with the way this thing is built. It's uh, really modular. Just take, a, take out a couple bolts and it seems like things just kind of come apart. Unlike a lot of things that, I've, that I take apart that are manufactured recently, um, like I'm thinking automobiles specifically and electronics that once it's put together you can't really take it apart. You kind of destroy it when you're disassembling it. This thing's really coming apart easily and I'm pretty impressed. I'm not sure if that, they did that for assembly purposes or if it was designed to be highly maintainable. But uh, in, in, in any case, I'm really impressed with it. So the way this unit is designed, I think this refrigeration unit will come out as a single module. I'm hoping all I have to do is re remove some of these screws and it'll just slide right out. We'll see if we luck out. Well, I think that's about all I'm going to do for this deconstruction at this point. I was originally going to take these uh, inner walls out with, uh, and give me an extra inch and a half on each side, I think, of space. But I think it's adding some, some rigidity to the unit, and it gives me something to, to screw into it if I want to build something inside this. So for the moment, I'm just going to leave it as is. So let's go down to the basement and take a look at all the different bit, bits and pieces that we have. Well, these are the major components. The outside shell with insulated sides, the inner insulated door, this product holder, a box of motor assemblies and miscellaneous screws and panels, and finally the refrigeration unit. I think I'm going to retrofit the outer box to use as a chemical cabinet. Right now, paint and oil and other chemicals are stored in little spaces here and there across, around the basement. Having them all consolidated in one place would be really nice. The rest of the items I'm going to tear down some more and put the materials in a raw material storage for future projects. I think this video is probably long enough as it is, so I'll do a follow-up video where I tear down the motor assemblies and the refrigeration unit. The control mechanism on the motors was a bit surprising to me, so that'll be interesting to kind of tear down and, and take a look at in more depth. And the question of whether the compressor is good is still up in the air. If this is your first time here at House of Hacks, welcome. I'm glad you're here and would love to have you subscribe. I believe everyone has a God-given creative spark. Sometimes this manifests through making things with a mechanical or technical bent. Through this channel, I hope to inspire, educate, and encourage these types of makers in their creative endeavors. Usually this involves various physical media like wood, metal, electronics, photography, but sometimes it involves taking things apart to see how they work and get materials to recycle for the future projects. If this sounds interesting to you, go ahead and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for joining me on our creative journey. Now go make something. Perfection's not required, fun is. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling. <laughs> rolling. rolling.